So this is a Swift Challenger Sport 586. Just going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van you've got a jockey wheel hitch and handbrake. We'll demonstrate these to you in person here on site. In the front locker you've got your gas bottle tie down where you can carry a maximum of two six kilogram propane gas bottles. On top of the bottle you've got an on off valve to open and close essentially. So open is on, close is off. The pipe work that goes into the bottle is a reverse thread fitment so you need to turn it the opposite way to a standard bottle thread for instance or a bottle cap for instance to release it from the front of the bottle. Down the side of the caravan you've got your water pump connection. You very simply release it by pulling back the trigger and releasing it from the side of the caravan. Push it into place and lock it into place uh, to connect the water system up. Then you've got your pickup pipe that drops down inside the act roll and you need to make sure that pump is fully submerged in water prior to turning the water pump on. You've then got your heating and hot water flue. Heating and hot water flue needs to be removed prior to igniting anything on gas, so you just pull it off like this. Um, and like I said, you will need to have that off because it's basically the same as the flue you have on the side of your house. We put a battery on the van, same as a gas bottle, just to demonstrate everything's working. So you've got your mains power lead coming into the front of the caravan. And you've got your uh, a leisure battery on here to demonstrate it's all working. Quick release terminals on top of the battery, but the mains lead will plug into the power on site. You've then got your motor mover and wheel nuts. Motor mover will demonstrate while you're here on site, and we'll also torque the wheel nuts to the correct setting prior to you taking the caravan. Coming towards the back of the caravan, you have your toilet flush tank, which you need, where you need to put three and a half litres of water and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use to allow the toilet system to be flushed. And in the bottom, you have a toilet waste set, which you release by pulling up the orange handle. The orange neck here turns out 90 degrees and tip the waste away. The grey cap is a measure for your pink and your blue fluid. And on the back of the cassette, you've got an orange pressure relief button, so when you're tipping the waste away, it doesn't spit and splits it back at you. At the back of the van, you've got a locker for storage underneath the bunks at the rear of the caravan. And on the rear of the van, you'll see your two wind-down legs to stabilise the caravan while it's on site. Going back around the front of the caravan now. Back down the door, uh, down, down the actual door side. You've got your barbecue gas point at the front of the van. You've got a three-pin socket to allow power out to your awning. You've got your two fridge vents, which are there to allow the hot air at the back of the fridge unit to take some cool air in. And then behind one of these, you'll also find a gas flue for when you're running the fridge on the gas. Coming on to the inside of the caravan now. Of the door as you walk into the caravan you've got your main control panel so you've got power on and power off you've got your water pump run here which is currently filling up you've then got your indicator here so you've got mains power coming to the caravan from the power post on site and if you're connected to the car and the caravan you'd have a red light on the caravan or a green light on the caravan you've then got a vehicle uh, leisure battery voltage for the battery on board the caravan then you've got a vehicle battery voltage to tell you what power is coming from the car you are towing with Perfect opportunity to show you how to fill the water system up. So you'd open all the taps up on the hot side of the water system. You'd come underneath the seat on the far right hand side of the caravan. Underneath this seat you'll find your yellow drain down valve. To fill the water system up that valve needs to be flat with the floor as it is at the moment and upright towards the bottom of the seat to drain the water system down. If that valve's upright towards the bottom of the seat because you want to drain it down you need to have all the taps open in the central position of the hot and the cold water uh, to drain that system down and you'd also put the shower head down on the floor. Now, as you can see the water system is slowly filling up but for the water system to fill up you would need to turn on the water pump so this green light would need to be on and then once the water system is full you'll have water running out of every tap continuously on the caravan on the hot side of the water system. At that point then you can shut all of the taps back off and you can start thinking about warming the water on board the van. So, as I was saying, when the water pump, when the water system is completely full, you can start thinking about warming the water up. So underneath the seat, on the front right-hand side of the caravan, you'll find your master trip switch, your household style trip switch. You'll find your household style trip switches here on the right-hand side bottom. You've then got your water heater, main power switch, which you need to have on for the water heater to work. You've got your space heater main power switch, which you'll need to have on for the heating to work. Your charger switch on for the water, uh, for the charger on board the caravan to charge the 12 volt battery. Then in some European countries, you'll have a reverse polarity light come on just here. Down the bottom, you've got your test switch. So you can hit this test switch. If this black switch drops down to the bottom, it means you've got mains power coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. And if it stays upright, it means you have no power coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. 
underneath the panel on the other side, you have your 12 volt fuses for the caravan, and this is for the 12 volt operation on board the van. And you have a list of what each of these is for on the door on the right hand side front. Then you have your 240 trip switches on the right hand side. But with that water heater switch now on, we can come to the control down here on the front of the cabinet, and we can select either 30 to 40 degrees of water temperature by pressing this switch the up position or 50 to 60 degrees of water temperature by pressing this switch down into the bottom position. So that is just your water heating for the caravan on electric. You can also run the water heating on gas, which you'd also need to use for boosting the water system while you're showering on board the caravan. So up on your front cabinet, so as you come to the front of the caravan, you'll see this switch here that says Ultra Store. You have the option to run 50 degrees of water temperature by flicking the switch up. It will self-ignite on gas if it sees a gas supply. And on one side, you'll get a green light if it's ignited and a red fail light on the opposite side. If you want to run the water heater on gas, you'd run it at 70 degrees of water temperature if, it was, uh, if you wanted to warm it up that much. You can also, like I said, use this as a boost for when you're showering on board the caravan. If you want to use the heating on board the caravan on the opposite side of the van, you'll find a dial that says ultra heat on the front of it. So what you'll do is you'll spin this gray dial around to the power supply you want to use, whether it be 500, 1000 or 2000 watts. And then you'll control the temperature of the heater on the dial in the center. The higher you go with the number, the hotter the heating will be. It will depend on what caravan site you're on to what you select this number two down the side. And the more amount of power you have available, obviously the more efficiently the heating is going to work. But if you're not sure what to set this to, ask the site office when you arrive on your holiday. You can also run the heating on gas. So on top of the heater itself, you'll have this gas dial. So you can spin the dial around between nine and 10, hold down the gas valve, and when it ignites on gas, you'll have this pilot light, you'll have a pilot light in this window down the front of the heater. Once it has ignited and you've got a pilot light there, you'll continue to hold down the gas valve for a further five to 10 seconds, then slowly release the valve, and you'll be able to control the temperature of the heater on the dial on top. I would advise that you look back at the flame again or the pilot light after a few minutes just to make sure it has stayed ignited. You've then got your option for blown air on the right hand side top of the heater. So you'll see at the front of the van there's a little black vent above the water heater electric control. To operate the blown air you've got a fan speed dial on top. The dot in the centre here indicates the heat's going to come out the front of the heater. The wave symbol is continuous blown air where it means the heat will continuously come out the vents around the caravan. You can also use these with the heat turned off, so they act as a cool air fan. Now on the right hand side, you've got an A, which indicates automatic blown air. The automatic blown air essentially allows the thermostat to cut in and out with the van, uh, with the heating. Or sorry, should I say, it allows the blown air to cut in and out with the heating th uh, thermostat. To operate the fridge, it's very simple to do, you've got a power button on the front. Once it loads, so we've got 240 mains power, and then we've got the fridge temperature on the right hand side here. You press the button to select the temperature you want it to be. Press the black button on the left hand side, and it will go to 12 volt mode when you're towing down the road. And essentially, this will turn the fridge into a cool box. It will only work though if you have the correct connection on your car coming to the caravan. If that is not wired up correctly or is not the right connection, then it will not operate as a cool box and it will also not charge the battery on board the caravan. Press the button again and we've got the gas mode. So the fridge will self ignite on gas if the gas bottle is turned on. And essentially the blue light here will be a pilot light and if it fails to ignite it will flash blue and it will bring up a nine and a spanner symbol on this right hand side. You turn the fridge off, you press and hold the power button and it will turn back off. Microwave, hob, grill and oven all do very much work like household appliances. So you would need 240 mains to make the microwave operate. And when you're traveling down the road, you would need to remove the, remove the microwave plate from inside of it. The 240 electric ring on the hob will only work when you've got mains power again. However, the rest of the hob, grill and oven will all work off the gas supply from the gas bottle in the front. The last thing we go through is the toilet in the bathroom. The toilet has an electric flush on top. You have a toilet full indicator light that illuminates red 
when the toilet waste set is completely full. The toilet seat itself turns for your convenience, as you can see here. However, when you're removing the toilet waste set from underneath the caravan, you need to make sure that toilet seat is pointing in the straight on position. Below the toilet, you'll see you've got your grey waste handle. You need to have this in the open position to allow the waste into the cassette under the van. And when you're not using the toilet, we do advise you have it in the shut position. And also, you'll need it in the shut position if you are removing that toilet waste cassette from underneath the van. If not, you could potentially damage the toilet waste cassette itself. So this is a Swift Challenger 586. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the caravan company, and we'd be more than happy to help. We appreciate your business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon. Bye bye for now.